Hi guys, in this video I'll be addressing an issue that comes up quite a lot, which is, is it better to use the textbook or the revision guide uh, to study biology? Let's begin by discussing why you need to make that choice. You might find yourself at the beginning of the course and you're trying to decide which one of these is more, which one of these is going to work uh, better for you. Because right at the beginning of your course, the, the routines that you get into, they are really, really important. If, if you get into a routine that doesn't work for you, it can be sometimes very difficult to get out of that routine. Now, obviously, there's going to be a lot of different answers to this. I'm just giving my opinion. I will be recommending one rather than the other. Actually, why be about the bush? I will be recommending the textbook in favor of the revision guide as a kind of week to week, you know, the thing to incorporate into your routine of studying the subject for the first time. OK, obviously, there's advantages to the revision guide closer to the exams, but we'll get into why I think um, the textbook is better, okay? Now again, it depends on what you're trying to get out of the subject. Um, the thing is that, you know, if, if you're here watching this video and you have seen any of my other videos, then you're the kind of person that's probably willing to put time and effort into your subject. And in that case, you're the kind of person potentially who it's not just about the details for you. It's not just about the content. It's about understanding the concept. It's about understanding what's going on on a very deep level. And that's because you're going for high grades ultimately. OK, because the way the exams are nowadays, there's a lot of application um, An application requires deep understanding of not just the facts, it's a deep understanding of the glue that links all the facts together, the concepts, okay? So anyone can memorize the content, um, but it takes a proper biologist to understand why, why those facts, why those facts in that order. Um, so it takes a biologist to understand the subject properly. And my point is that the way the exams are now, the thing that's going to differentiate um, the people that are going to get A stars and A's and B's versus people that, that get more modest grades is their ability to gain the marks based on application. Yeah, there are marks on the exams, about, I don't know, 20, 30% of marks that are there for knowing your content, just purely knowing the key points from the content that you study. But the big chunk of middle marks are for being able to apply the concepts and the knowledge uh, in new scenarios, in, in new contexts, contexts, okay? And in order to do, do that, in order to be able to separate the facts from the concepts, you need to understand the concepts. So the real question we're asking here is, well, which of these is preparing you to understand the concepts the best? Okay, and, and my argument would be, and, and in this case, just a, you know, a, core, a side note, is that we're not comparing this particular revision guide and we're not comparing this particular textbook. Not this particular exam board, nor the publishers. We're not making any of that comparison. We're, we're, we're making the comparison of the types of thing that they are. This is a textbook, that's a revision guide, whichever exam board, whichever publisher, and what's the best way to go for your particular course? Okay, now, you know, I can only speak for, for biology, but um, it might apply to other subjects. The fact is that while revision guides are presenting to you the key facts, and, and they do do that, both of them present, uh, you know, all the important information that is on the specification, and that is the, one of the main requirements that you need uh, or one of the main ways in which you need to prepare yourself going into an exam. The point is, or well, the fact is, that one of them takes time to explain why those details are there and the other one presents the details right in front of you. But the other one, it's sometimes more difficult. With the textbook, it's much more difficult to get to what the key points are because there seems to just be a lot of uh, text and maybe you can consider it a waffle, but I wouldn't do that if I were you. 
um, th there does seem to be a lot of extra information, examples maybe that you don't need to memorize. Um, contextual information that takes you step by step from what you knew at GCSE gradually point by point to the level of understanding that you need at A level. That's going to take words, that's going to take space, it's going to take time for you to read through, but it's going to give you a better understanding of the concepts um, through explanations, through more examples, um, and that should be uh, deepening your understanding of the content and concepts that you're supposed to know, which hopefully gives you that edge in terms of being able to apply your knowledge, not simply restate it or recall it. The next thing would be that, well, that makes it tougher. That makes it a little bit more difficult. So it's like, you know, I can see the appeal. You've got time pressures, you know, you, you've got to get stuff done, you've got tests coming up, and I can see the appeal of the revision guide even at a very early stage in your studying process because it's presenting you with everything you need to know. You don't need to make notes, it's everything there. You don't need to read through the textbook because why read all that when the revision guide's telling you exactly what you need to know? But that's where, that's where the mistake is because when you have to work to find the information using the textbook it's harder work it's tougher it's definitely going to be more time consuming but that is an investment of time that you're making to understand your subject that little bit better than you know someone else okay and and by doing that you're going to put yourself uh, you'll be able to get more marks uh, in exams and by doing that you'll be putting yourself at the top of the pile and when the grade boundaries are being decided you'll find yourself at the right end. That's the key point that you know the the textbook it, by design it it makes you work to find the information uh, that is important but it takes you more step by step through um, all the levels of knowledge that you need to get to to get yourself from GCSE up to A-level standard and that takes time and space whereas the revision guide is maybe doing it um, up front. Now again, you know, the, the, the caveat to this is maybe because we're not comparing specific textbooks and specific revision guides it might be the case that some revision guides are just so good that they simultaneously explain the concept to you um, and just present you with the key details. And it might be that some textbooks are just written so badly that they don't do a good job of explaining the concept to you while hiding all the key information um, within uh, the paragraphs and pages of text. So that might be the case. So you do have to kind of look at samples online, maybe um, look at copies that other people have to see if, if that might work for you. But on a theoretical level, the textbook is would be the best thing to, to use as your studying companion while you're, while you're learning subjects for the first time. When you get to the end and you've understood the concepts already, at that time maybe you don't need all the extra information and at that time you should be using the revision guide. Okay, and on that note, it's a bit of a side note and maybe this is a video by itself, but you really should not be using the textbook to revise. You should be using the textbook to familiarize yourself with new topics so that you can understand them. But once you've understood the topics, I mean, you should not be going into the, the, the textbook. Um, you know, like you should not be reading the textbook as your main revision source. So revision, so when you're revising or learning, memorizing content, it should be your notes that you're using, or it, it might even be the revision guide that you're using, though I still wouldn't recommend that. Um, but yeah, okay, so I mean I'm, I'm seeing too many people kind of using textbooks to revise and that, that again that's a mistake. Textbooks are for learning the subject on a deep level but again once that's done you've got to move on to different resources to, to, to satisfy the requirements of other things that you're trying to do. Final thing, so this is a little bit of a hot take from me, I think currently textbooks might even be too thin. So this textbook is covering year one and year two, it's quite intimidating, but even then, this is, if I, if I compare the number of pages this textbook takes to, 
to explain carbohydrates and the number of pages that that revision guide take to, takes to cover carbohydrates, they are pretty close. They are pretty close. So you've got to ask yourself whether the, even the textbooks, thicker though they are, are they even taking their time to explain things in a, in a proper a way with, with a number of examples that really takes someone step by step from GCSE to A levels, or are they um, making the textbooks a bit on the slim side so that they, you know, they don't put off people from reading them, but then not doing a good enough job to explain concepts with a few extra paragraph, a few extra examples, and and you know thereby becoming a bit fatter. So for example, what I mean is like this. This is a textbook from like back in my day. Um, and you know, everything was back, better back in my day, but um, not, not to say that, but, but this, is, this is my point, is that the thickness of textbooks should not frighten you, okay? So if you can, like find like solid, maybe even older books, like they might, because they take up all the extra space required to maybe give extra information, that's fine, all right? But you are someone who can use extra information and use it to build up a more well-rounded picture, a more well-rounded understanding of the concept that you're studying. And despite reading five or six pages, you are confident to kind of condense that down to the key points. You are able to do that because you understand what's important, what, what's there to help you understand what's there to kind of, um, what's there that you need to take away. Um, and, and make sure that you know, okay? So I, my hot take would be that maybe the current textbooks are kind of letting students down a little bit because they're afraid to, to, to explain things in depth and thoroughly um, because they're scared that the textbook might look then too intimidating for people to buy, okay? It's like, a, it's a kind of, it's, it's a race towards the bottom kind of thing. Like who can make the thinnest te textbook that, that, is, that looks the most accessible, that looks the most appealing, but then doesn't do a good job of explaining important things properly. And then you end up with a textbook like not being much more than a revision guide, really. Um, and that might not be the best thing for people to develop a deep understanding of their subject. All right, guys, so that's, that's my kind of take on, uh, you know, the resource that's gonna be best for you if if you want to do well in biology. And by well, we mean high grades, right? Um, so textbook as your main kind of week to week study companion. As we get closer to the exam, you're going to use your notes. At that time is the only time that I would recommend looking at, at the revision guide. However, if you do have the luxury of getting the two resources, it's always, you know, the more resources you have, it's, it can be helpful because then you can compare um, different resources on the same topic and and you can see whether one one has a better explanation or wh whether one has more accessible information than the other one. All right guys, so that's my take on revision guide versus textbook. Textbook wins from my point of view. Um, I hope I've given you the reasons why I think that. Again, whatever works for you, that is the best thing. If the revision guide is working for you, if you're getting A's and B's in your assessments along the way, don't change it. If it ain't broke, don't break it. That's what I say. So it'll be interesting to know what you guys think on this matter. Uh, if you have certain views, you know, um, talking it out, asking each other for advice um, is always a good thing to do. So use the comment section. Uh, right. Thank you very much. I hope this has been useful to you. Um, keep working, guys. Keep going.